Drive is my good sell. Now that I've reviewed that uh, uh, movie for Russ, <laughs> and it was okay. Uh, a woman's naked back is okay. You can handle that. <laughs> but every great movie has a shower scene. That's just a, a given. Um, <laughs> and if you're wondering, it's because of the previous video I did. <clears throat> and so, uh, as ex-Mormons, uh, there's a a point where we realize uh, I don't need to be so paranoid about doing or not doing certain things that the Mormon Church had forced us to do or not do uh, because uh, Mormon Church is a church of taking away our agency it's for our better good that's uh, how you get everybody to the celestial kingdom by taking away your agency and of course we all should have known that it's not Heavenly Father's plan of happiness it's somebody else's plan that was thrown in to say hey you know what I don't like this three kingdoms of glory thing I want everybody to be exalted let's force everybody to be good <laughs> and so we'll deny them Mountain Dew will ban R-rated movies uh, and so uh, now that we've come to realize that we don't want nothing to do with a church that takes away our agency and that lies to us and deceives us there comes a point where we realize you know um, what is my morality now what is my concept of good versus evil uh, and so, if, if people uh, choose another Christian religion, uh, I, I hope you guys are, are thinking in those terms. That you're not just doing it for uh, having people that befriend you. Uh, for example, when um, my sisters and her husband were having trouble in their marriage in the beginning, he decided to uh, uh, go to a Christian religion to say, oh, they love me there. They don't judge me there. <laughs> and so he wasn't really interested in joining that religion. He was only doing it to uh, throw it back in my sister's face of how mean she was to him. And, uh, and so I, I hope that going to another church is not a rebound <laughs> like uh, you break up with somebody and so you immediately try to find anybody who will fill that void that is left behind and uh, uh, and hopefully you guys are uh, doing introspection as to uh, what you're going to believe in now that the Mormon Church is not something you want to believe in. Uh, and so, yeah, I have no problem with Mountain Dew. Never did anyway. <laughs> but I was a rebel growing up. Uh, but uh, the uh, concept of good and evil as taught to us by Mormonism should be a template for what we should avoid falling for out of Mormonism because in Mormonism it was all about hedge laws just like the Pharisees that Jesus by the way was violating on a regular basis that the Pharisees were pointing out to him and making all sorts of uh, judgmental accusations against him oh he's a drunk he's possessed by demons he's he's a poor <laughs> he's hanging out with the poor he's hanging out with tax collectors He's working on the Sabbath. And so today, for example, I mean, Sabbath day. Are you going to stores on Sunday now? 
Uh, is it just because you've left the church and no longer believe in in religion as an atheist, maybe, or uh, have you turned Jewish so that Saturday is your Sabbath now, like the bakers? Uh, do you understand that there was an origin for why Sunday is the Christian day? Uh, and in the Mormon church, uh, Sidney Rigdon's the cause for our Sunday services with the sacrament. And, uh, uh, <coughs> and so understanding why we were doing what we were doing and understanding the origins of what really used to happen is also important. So like I said, I can tell you all about the origin of religion, which came from the Egyptians, where the sacrament comes from, and all Sunday worship, which didn't exist prior to Babylon, when the Jews got uh, taken into captivity. That's how it all began. Because for the Babylonians, the number seven was a bad luck number. So when they created their calendar, they had seven days in a week. So the seventh day was the bad luck day, and so their leaders uh, declared seven day, the seventh day as a day of rest from your labor because of the superstition that number seven is evil and bad just like the number 13, thanks to the Pope who went after the Knights Templar on the 13th of, Friday the 13th in October, that one year. Uh, and, and that's what the church has done to us. They have taught and trained us to believe that good and evil is dependent on doing the right things versus doing the wrong things, and that's idolatry when objects become the source of our faith rather than revelation. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell everybody and the Pharisees were upset with, is Jesus was saying, these hedge laws, no, they're causing us to violate the law, which is love. And that's what we saw in the Mormon church as Mormons would force us to obey the hedge laws, and if we didn't obey the hedge laws, all sorts of hell would break loose, as uh, they would do all sorts of things to force us back, uh, like emotional guilt trips, uh, uh, punishments, uh, disciplinary action, uh, uh, snubbing, or uh, what's it called? remember um, but uh, uh, similar to turning their, your back on somebody and uh, ignoring them uh, and and so that should have helped us understand you know this isn't the right church if this is how I'm being treated just for drinking a Mountain Dew That's the whole point, is that the R rating is an idol. And yet Mormons have misunderstood, but the prophets didn't bother to correct Mormons on it either. Uh, as Hinckley went on, uh, what was it, was it the 60 Minutes one, or was it with uh, um, the guy who married the Mormon girl, Larry King? Uh, one of those interviews, he uh, was asked, so you don't watch R-rated movies? No, isn't it great? Uh, excuse me, um, <laughs> I've seen a whole lot of R-rated movies. I don't see what the problem is. And then Benson comes out in his first uh, general conference in 1986 of April and uh, quotes Packer, who forbid us to listen to hard music because of the beat and the tempo possess us with evil. After uh, that April, when uh, Benson talked about it, uh, Metallica came out with Master of Puppets in February. <laughs> and I, yeah, I literally, I bought the, the 
um, I guess it was a cassette tape back then, more than I, uh, and would play uh, the one side uh, as I went to bed. Uh, so, yeah, good times. But uh, again, I came to realize that it's not the music, it's not the movies themselves, it's the teachings. So, Madonna's Material Girl is something that we should be cautious that we don't fall prey to becoming uh, for women demanding that a man be rich before she gets in a relationship with him and men thinking that they have to be rich in order to get the hot girl. Uh, and those are philosophies that we need to watch out for rather than the beat and the tempo of Elder Packer <laughs> and Benson <laughs> and so uh, when I was married to the first wife uh, she took us to the library uh, there in Canada in Lethbridge and uh, we'd uh, rent uh, videos that they had and uh, we got a lot of Bob Hope stuff and uh, black and white of course uh, for some of them uh, some of them I guess were got colorized but, uh, oh my god what a sexually deviant pervert he is <laughs> oh my god and I've seen R-rated movies at that point had to not watch them married to her um, but uh, I mean for me having watched our rated movies and to be shocked <laughs> by Bob Hope of all people from back in what was it the 50s oh my god uh, and so that's what the church did not teach us is that the precepts that people put forth in their music, in the movies, uh, are, uh, are what we need to be paying close attention to, rather than the outward appearance of, oh, well, she deserves to get raped because she wasn't wearing her temple garments. Seriously? And so, uh, And so when you, I remember back decades ago, uh, the news story of a Mormon girl who had gone into art class at the University of Utah. And she was supposed to uh, play a role where she was supposed to say some four letter words, oh evil. So she complained to the school to force the school to not allow her to play this character. And you just go, oh my God. Uh, you can't go into acting and expect to be someone who can dictate who's going to hire them and make a certain movie that they approve of. You have to earn that that's that level uh, to be able to do that. Um, so, like Gwyneth Paltrow, for example, she had to do uh, videos that weren't blockbusters, uh, where she was always the abused woman who had to overcome her abuser. Uh, and, but it wasn't until she became the it girl. Um, was it Cosmopolitan or Glamour or whoever names the it girl for the year? Uh, it was her role in Shakespeare in Love that finally got her to the point where she was then able to say, I don't want to do that role, I want to do this role. Uh, you have to work to get to that level. But this Mormon girl, brand new, trying to learn to be an actress, 
had her vision set on how she was going to reform the whole industry. Uh, but the Me Too movement helped us realize that uh, many, and in fact even Gwyneth Paltrow, uh, got uh, extorted, sexually extorted, uh, in order to rise up the ladder, uh, which is unfortunate. So in that case, where crimes are involved, yeah, you, you don't tolerate that. But to think that a four-letter word is going to send you to hell, and that you're going to use your standards to impose it on, on uh, Hollywood and upon the teacher to say, no, this is inappropriate to say these words, and I will not say them. My standards are too high for this class. Okay, don't be an actress. Because there's no such thing as a bad word. And secondly, you're playing another character. And to be a good actress, you need to be able to perform that other character. And so, yes, other characters are not going to be exalted Mormons. You're going to deal with real, worldly, evil people sometimes, depending on the role you get cast in. And it's not a matter of for reforming that character into a godly person, you're supposed to play that role. And, and as long as you're not being exploited into criminal behavior, uh, as the Me Too movement exposed, uh, there's nothing wrong with a role that you're going to say some things. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're not comfortable playing roles of other people, then you don't have to go into acting. There are other fields to go into. Um, but, uh, but that's the thing that we now have to go through, is what is a moral person? And having taken... Uh, well, studied, not just taken one class. I took multiple classes uh, on uh, morality and ethics. That was pretty much part of my philosophy degree. Uh, and uh, uh, there are different uh, proposals for what constitutes a good person versus somebody who's not so good call it different ways, like morality versus ethics, for example. There's like two different, uh, they're not really theories, because both of them are wrong, <laughs> and so they need to be dropped, uh, but that's the problem I ran into with the, the ethics class, is that I was being presented with all of these famous uh, ethical theories, and having had the philosophy of science uh, part as well, uh, you're supposed to drop a theory when it's confirmed or found to be uh, unsound. And all ethical theories are unsound. And that's why I did philosophy of Mormonism, is uh, that I had found that Mormonism was not discussed in any of these theories. Christianity sure was, and Mormon uh, leaders uh, were trying to promote some of these Christian uh, philosophies uh, in conference. And I'm going, no, no, what are you doing? No, that is an unsound theory. Don't put that in conference. Uh, but, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, but, uh, Hopefully, you guys are interested in being good people. I hope that's the case. I hope Mormonism hasn't gotten you into the the, the hardened, <laughs> evil person that they tried to get us to become. Uh, <laughs> I'm evil! 
I'm a sinner. But yeah, I heard lots of Mormons give up and say, oh, I'm not worthy like the leaders of the church. I'm just a lowly Mormon sinner. Uh, and then people always talk about, oh, we'll never be perfect in this life. Um... You've forgotten what the temple was supposed to be for? That was it. Once you get your uh, washing and anointings, you're now perfect. You've been anointed as a Christ. You're perfect. But Mormons, they miss that because the leaders won't tell us. They don't want us to be. They want us to keep degrading us and belittling us and telling us we're evil and that we're not as good as they are. And so when they came out you know, a couple years ago saying, Oh, we're mortal men too. We have weaknesses. No, you have crimes. <laughs> Don't try pulling that on us. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, I, I hope you're thinking about it. Uh, the Constitution actually gives us the perfect model for morality. And that is uh, not just that we have inalienable rights uh, to life, liberty, and property, but when we allow others also to have life, liberty, and property, that is a moral position. Because when you violate somebody's rights to life, liberty, and property, you know you've committed a crime. And you're supposed to be held accountable in the courts. Uh, and so, thus, the morality in our Constitution of granting everyone life, liberty, and property. And when we go into whatever we go into, and whether it's religion, business, or government, if we use those three pillars in our lives, granting life, liberty, and property to all, but holding those who violate life, liberty, and property accountable, um, we now have a moral system by which to run a nation. And uh, um, I recommend that one. But, you know, what do I know? That is the Mormon version, because when you violate life, liberty, and property, you're taking away agency, because the person no longer has the agency to live. They no longer have the agency to be free. They no longer have the agency of having uh, possessions to do something in their life. You, know, you steal somebody's lawnmower, how are they mowing their lawn? Well, they got to buy another one now. Are they able to afford to buy, buy another one, or did that now ruin them financially because they had to buy another lawnmower? Uh, and is it a electric one, or is it a gas-powered one that puts emissions into the atmosphere that takes away the life of other people? Oh yeah, carbon. The, uh, forgotten what it's called. I got carbon on my mind. But uh, the emissions, I can't think of it now. It's obsolete. It's been obsolete for a long time. But they're hesitant to bring out the better technologies that are more environmentally friendly because they don't produce a greater profit for a return on their investment. And so, yeah, they first rolled them out as being insufficient. You go 10 miles with your electric car, you have to recharge it. <laughs> so, if you have to go uh, five and a half miles, you're not going to make it home in time to recharge your car. <sighs> they purposely sabotage it for that reason. But, uh, and the Simpsons make fun of it by saying solar power it only works if the sun's shining. Uh, a battery. <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, I, it's, it's not complicated to live your life where you're thinking of other people, allowing them life, liberty, and property. Uh, it would be nice under coronavirus if we would all think that way. Because uh, people don't understand the coronavirus is not a regular virus that we get as we sneeze or, or cough in our regular lives. Because those little viruses help build up our immune system also. This will, if we're already with a good immune system, but you don't want to start off with your life with a coronavirus because uh, you're going to die. That's why babies get the vaccines for certain diseases and illnesses uh, is because those are killers. And that's what this is. It's a killer. We're going to have to have babies given this vaccine as along with all the other vaccines that doctors have found that are necessary for human life. And people are not understanding this as we're spreading it around. i got to get today's numbers, by the way. So, uh, I hope that's the plan you're hoping to pursue, is a, a morality where uh, you expect others to give you life, liberty, and property, and at the same time, you give others life, liberty, and property. And not get hung up on, oh, that's an R-rated movie, you're not allowed to watch that. <laughs> but again, apply that into movie watching. Does the movie have the protagonist say, oh, well, we've got to violate the Constitution in order to catch the bad guy? <laughs> no, you don't need to violate the Constitution. <sighs> as much fun as it is to watch Jack Bauer do it, but, uh, uh, or Madonna. No, you don't need to punish the poor with your lack of love. So, notice I didn't go like a virgin, didn't do that song. <laughs> And what do you mean, like a virgin, touched for the very first time? Aren't you a virgin if you're touched for the first time? Why are you saying like a virgin? <laughs> oh, Madonna. So funny. But awesome in James Bond. 